The problem with just doing personal development, for example, is that you, you're just doing it or you're keeping it in your head. Imagine just reading books or doing courses or attending seminars. That's great. That information eventually trickles down into your body. However, if you do a concept with your body and you're, you're not just repeating it over and over again, you do it and you, you integrate it in every cell of your body, that's totally different. G'day, this is George Free, and welcome to another martial arts media business podcast. Today I have with me, and I'm going to I'm 100% confident I'm going to say this 100% right, Bogdan Roshu. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. Bogdan Roshu. Did I get the R right? <laughs> yes, yes. The, actually, the shoe was like, uh, you know, it's a bit unusual. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks for the invite. Awesome. So, um, quick, quick introduction. And I'm, well, I'm going to let Bogdan do most of the introduction, but... Uh, uh, Bogdan invited me to his podcast a couple of weeks back, Personal Development Through Martial Arts. And you can find that on addictedtowingchun.com. And it's addicted with yes. the number two. Um, so we're going to touch a bit on that on the personal development side within martial arts, well. within martial arts training as well. And just going to really have chat, have a chat, have a have some fun and uh, learn more about Bogdan and what happens in the wonderful world of Romania. So officially, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> uh, thanks for the invite. And um, like I mentioned earlier, it's very nice to see you again. And I'm excited to sit down and talk martial arts, personal development and marketing. Right? <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Is- All right. So first and foremost, who is Bogdan Roshu? I'm just a guy, you know, um, I, I've been doing martial arts since I was like 13. Uh, and the primary reason was because I just wanted to have to be a bit more self-confident and learn a bit more about people. I was horrible with people. Uh, because like in, for example, in fifth grade, I was voted as being the most annoying, obnoxious kid in class. And that was, that was a bit weird for me because I love people so much and I just didn't understand why this stuff was happening. But somehow I felt that I, it was because of me feeling really insecure. So I started my martial arts journey when I was 13 and in my second year of college I discovered personal development and I noticed that there was a, a really interesting connection between the two in the sense that what one was missing, the other could provide. So that's how this thing got, you know, got started. Yeah. So, um, I know, so I'm, I'm on, on personal development, right? So what, what actually led you to personal mm-hmm. development? What is, what, what, I mean, you, you're saying, right, there was, you know, you, you, you're feeling that you were labeled most annoying kid in, in the class, although, you know, you're thinking you were probably trying to just reach out and connect and... And then you just you said you discovered personal development. So is that what sort of was the path to get you to saying, well, there's some things I'd like to improve about myself? Somehow, I mean, I, I had been doing, when I discovered personal development, I had been doing martial arts for seven years. I started with this acrobatic style of martial arts. Uh, and it was funny because like the flyer said, uh, learn karate, ninjutsu, judo, aikido, uh, well, and some and three other, three or four other styles of martial arts, and they were all taught by the same guy. And, uh, like, you can, you can imagine the level of expertise. But he was good. He was a really good fighter, right? We ended up doing a lot of ground fighting, which was fun, and a lot of click, uh, flicks, you know, a lot of acrobatic stuff. But I still don't know how to defend myself. And I was still scared of the idea of of confrontation, of physical confrontation, especially in the street. And three years later, I switched to Shotokan Karate. And that's where I learned, you know, the value of, of working really, really hard. And, you know, reaching that point when you say, okay, I can't do it anymore. And just going beyond that. And after 
three years of doing that, I felt a lot stronger. You know, my, my uh, posture changed, but I still felt very insecure. I still felt that my self-worth was close to nothing, that, you know, I was still comparing myself to, to other people in a huge way. And personal development came in the form of network marketing, right? A friend said, dude, you need to do this. You need to start doing this. And uh, I did more you know, more for just like having a side income just to make a bit more money, which did not happen, of course. <laughs> but I really got passionate about personal development. I started reading this these books and um, these concepts, these ideas really shaped me in the following years. Interesting that you say that because... Uh... Network marketing was my stepping stone into the online was business it? world. Yeah, it, that's mm. that's that's what got me started. I know I know there's there's many uh, there's many perceptions about it. It's a scam and it's this and it's a pyramid, and there's definitely a lot of that. And um, mm-hmm. especially now with the Bitcoin phase phase happening and cryptocurrency, it, it yeah, really sticks okay, out, yeah. and it's it it it's annoying. Um, but I was I was part of the network marketing industry for a long time, and uh, what I find is, and, and this is what happens with a lot of people that get into that is it is their first stepping stone into business. They normally try it, um, achieve a little success mm-hmm, or mm-hmm, nothing, mm-hmm. but it opens the mind to hang on. I can I can provide for myself. I can create this business. So it does it does leave a good groundwork for. Business skills, well, the start of business, being in business, and then of course, as absolutely, you say, the personal development that goes with it. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, this whole idea of sitting down with someone and uh, making an offer is is hugely intimidating for a lot of people. And um, yeah, yeah, you know, the the problem was back then that I wasn't really aware of the fact that when you're making an offer, you shouldn't really be pushy. I was super pushy with, uh, with people. Um, but now we know better. <laughs> cool. So, so now if, let's, let's define, cause you, okay. Oh, and I want to get to the personal development with martial arts, but yes. let's, let's fill that gap in between that first. So you got into personal development. What exactly did you start doing? that had the biggest impact on on your life? Uh, from personal development or from personal martial arts? Because yeah. well, you, um, you, you were already in martial arts, right? So martial arts was there and your mm-hmm. next thing was to start developing yourself. So how did, how did that sort of transition, I guess? And then what, well, what did you actually do? <laughs> to be honest, it actually started making more sense years later because you're reading all these books, you're getting the information, but until you have also the experiences where to to use that information and consolidate them, it's really not worth much. So I didn't see any ch- like any any kind of change in in terms of of my self confidence until I started teaching it. To be honest, and and that's uh, you know that's that's that may sound weird to a lot of people. Like why why do you teach stuff that you don't 100% own. Well, that's that was exactly the reason why because I wanted to learn um, these concepts and, and own them. So I felt that by teaching them, it would really help me do that, and it did. And, and that's when all, all all of these concepts made sense. And it's still, you know, I'm still teaching stuff that I want to to learn and master. I'll at least get better at it. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, that's because that's the progression of life, right? I mean. Uh... Um, I, th- I think it's always important to pay credit where credit's due. Um, there's nothing more frustrating than for, for me that, uh, you know, an intellectual property just gets passed around like, you know, you yes. learn something and you pass it on as your own. Um, and I think for the most, you know, people can see through that. But I mean, um, content creation, like what we, we're doing here with podcasts, a lot of that is actually educating yourself on the go. Um, sometimes mm-hmm. yes, it's from experience, but as you're saying, the other the other part of it is it's something you want to be better of. So the minute you start articulating it into words, 
you actually start getting the better understanding of, of what it is that you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And a huge turning point in my life was actually learning because I opened, I started teaching. I was I started teaching Wing Chun. That was actually my third martial arts um, style. I discovered Wing Chun when I moved to Greece to study. And I got my instructor's certificate and started teaching. And you probably know, like working with your clients, the challenges of opening a school when you know nothing about marketing and you're uh, handing out flyers and you're just uh, dealing with all this frustration. And I sat down with uh, with the person who would become my marketing mentor, and he asked me about what I was doing. And you know, I, I told him, "Look, we we do teach martial arts, but we focus a lot on mindset." And um, on on the tools that you can use to better your relationships, to um, actually have a better relationship with with yourself. And he's like, "Yeah, but you're not just teaching martial arts, are you? You're also teaching personal development." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, that, that actually makes so much sense." So he was like, "Why don't you just be um, open with that in your marketing efforts?" And yeah, that, that made a huge difference when I just put myself out there the way I was and the way that I wanted to, um, to help people out. So can you give an example? So I mean, if, you, if you're doing personal development within your martial arts teaching, how, does, how do you go about that? Mm -hmm. Well, we usually like have five to ten minutes discussions every um, training session. And what I've learned to do now is to allow everyone to speak. And I speak at the end. I, I offer my opinion at the end. And I ask them, you know, what concepts did you use from or, or did you find um, in the Wing Chun training today? What ideas that you feel you can apply in your life directly? Wing Chun is, is interesting because it's not a technique-based martial art in the sense that, okay, you do step one, you do step two, and you do step three. It's based on ideas, it's based on concepts. So in Wing Chun, we say that you can do an idea with your hand, you can do the same idea with a stick, you can do it with your car, you can apply it in your life in terms of uh, your relationships, in terms of your work, in terms of business development. Um, one example would be, we, we, do, we use the straight punch, right? When we do the first form, we do a straight punch. For us, it's not just a straight punch, it's, an, it's a way of thinking. So instead of going round, right, to um, get to my target, I, go, I, I choose the fastest way. Right. Sometimes, sometimes a straight line is not always the best solution. Sometimes you do need to go round, right? But if you can go straight to the point, just do that, right? So you're learning to be a bit more um, direct. You're learning to be more assertive with your way of thinking and with um, um, with who you are as um, as a person. So we normally do that. I get my students thinking of how they can apply these ideas, these concepts to better not just their lives, but also to share them with, uh, with other people. So that's how we basically include the whole personal development. And then I, at the end, I share, you know, some of the stuff that I've learned, some of the books that I've read, um, the videos that I post on my YouTube channel, they're all, there's, there's you know, the Wing Chun, the, specifically focused on the martial arts, and there's the mindset and personal development aspect of um, of the channel. So, if you say you you sharing you sharing the same stuff on your social media channels and so forth, is is that sort of your leading theme? As everything you you, you tie it in with your marketing, you tie it in with your the whole concept of how you deliver everything. I mean, do you would you would you promote yourself as a martial arts school or a martial arts school focused on personal development or vice versa? Personal development through martial arts school. Right, of course, as you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now bringing it back to to you know in in the class, and you say you get people really involved. Do you find that it creates can it create some discomfort, or that there's uh, really presents some confidence issues of really I've got to I've really got to step this up and that type of thing. 
Uh, are you asking for the students or for the instructor who yeah. would like to do that? The, the student. For the student. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's a great question. Well, um, they, they kind of expect it in a sense when they walk in because it's a, it's a whole new concept. So they don't, they would expect something a bit different from a um, traditional martial arts uh, training program. So the people that usually come to, to the school, actually, they, they do feel a bit uncomfortable at the beginning in sharing their experiences and um, talking with the group. But slowly, slowly, they, they, they feel because the, the school is very, is very welcoming for new people. So slowly but surely, they, they get out of, uh, of a state of, uh, you know, what, what should I say? Or um, what if I say something silly? And we just start having a conversation. Usually everyone in the group contributes, says something. Cool. Something silly like swapping martial arts to personal development instead of personal development no, to martial no, no. arts. That's, that's <laughs> normal. That's natural. All right, <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So any, anything else that, that you can add with, with the personal development side and how it's sort of working for you and I guess results that students are getting that they might have not gotten expected? You know, the whole thing of... Uh, sell them what they need and give them what they, or give them what they want and sell them what they want and give them what they need. What they need. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. There we mm -hmm. go. Well, um, I think, I personally think that all martial arts schools should include a personal development curriculum in, in their teachings, in their, in their trainings. And if you, if you love martial arts and you don't really know where to start, a great, great aspect would be just to have a personal development specialist come once in a while in your school and hold like a um, hold an event, hold a workshop. Maybe somebody who specialized in communication skills, somebody who specialized in um, performance and um, productivity, somebody who specialized in just just you know getting in psychology or something like that, right? Or motivation. Um, I feel that martial arts are like when you're doing martial arts, you're really building a very, very powerful engine, like upgrading your engine from a, uh, I don't know, like, like an old car to a very powerful Ferrari or, you know, it's like, and I'm referring to your willpower, you're really tapping into that, that, you know, what, I'm actually stronger than I thought. And I can actually take on more than I thought you're learning hard work. However, you're not really learning what to do with that engine once you get it. Um, so by learning about personal development and, um, you know, what you can, how, how you actually, what are the actual techniques or how to communicate a lot better or more efficiently with people, you're getting the best of both. The problem with just doing personal development, for example, is that you, you're just doing it or you're keeping it in your head. Imagine just reading books or doing courses or attending seminars. That's great. That information eventually trickles down into your body. However, if you do a concept with your body and you're, you're not just repeating it over and over again, you do it and you, you integrate it in every cell of your body, that's totally different. For example, confidence. You might, you might learn about confidence. You might hear a very inspirational YouTube video about believing in yourself. But unless you do something with your body and change the way you use it, change the way you use your hands, change the way you use your, your spine and um, the way you use your face, right? You're not really going to understand it. So, it, it, like, in, in my crazy opinion, I think all personal development uh, programs should include a physical aspect, more or more of a physical aspect, be it martial arts, be it fitness, be it tai chi, be it, you know... I'm saying that as if Tai Chi were not a martial arts. Sorry, sorry, uh, all the Tai Chi instructors <laughs> listening. <in>. Um, <laughs> yeah, so at the same time, all, all martial arts programs, I think, would benefit very much from, from including the personal development pro program. And um, yeah. I think, yeah. I think you hit it there in a, in a huge way because... 
that's that's really what it is, right? Is and and I mean, you've got your your different vis- learning styles. You've got you know, someone might be visual, someone might be auditory, and then kinesthetic, so the movement. So yes. when when you tie it into martial arts, then you're tapping into all the senses. So by uh, by changing your uh, and, and it could be really subtle, but just I guess I guess you've got to have as an instructor, you've got to have that personal development goal in mind or a syllabus or something that you follow with that in mind and then you can apply it in a way that it sinks in and it really becomes part of your body body really as in uh yeah yes um yes and i think that's probably that's the biggest failure in most because in most personal development things because as you talk about um there's an and Anthony, I think it's Tony Robbins, they made, they actually drew up the statistic that if, and, and this is why they, I mean, they've got it, I mean, he's really the guru of guru when it comes to mm. personal development. And, um, mm-hmm. and they also got the process down to a science knowing, obviously, where people fall off and their behaviors and uh, where they don't follow through. And there's a statistic, and I'm, uh, don't quote me on this because I might get it wrong, but I think it's 21 days if if someone doesn't take action enforce the habit mm-hmm. in 21 days it's yeah. it's pretty much gone and then i think it takes 21 days to actually enforce a habit of day to day before it's an actual habit but that's the biggest danger is if it's not if it's not physically applied then mm-hmm. the habit is yes. just easy to let yeah. go yeah right? yeah yeah that's actually the, the biggest drawback of any personal development uh, seminar, you know, workshop or whatever is that you do it once. If you just do it once, you're never going to integrate all those all the lessons that you got, right? You might have a notebook full of facts and, and ideas, but if you just put it somewhere and forget about it in, in your drawer, it's not going to work. And I'm saying that to remind myself as well because I, I attended UPW two years ago, right? I still have the notebook. But if you don't have the environment, if you don't have a group of people who are who are all together striving for the same goal or reinforcing those specific habits, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to do so. Yeah. So, so for for me, for me, when I started martial arts, uh, and and this was really like if I if I dig down to the deeper things of why I started, this was a big thing because you know I've always been striving for that self-improvement and doing personal development and then so for me it was really backwards when i when i started martial arts training i i immediately made the link which is what hooked me because i'd been studying doing all this personal development stuff and now i'm Mm -hmm. applying things in a physical manner and now it's like ah this is great this this is coming together for me yes Um, yes but what happens when the mind is not ready you know, if, if, because a lot of people aren't open to personal development. Do you mm-hmm. just not hammer it in or you just subtly actually apply it in the way you go about your teaching? Uh, you know, usually the people who say that they don't need personal development are the people who need it the most. So I tend not to work with, uh, with people who don't see the value of personal development. I did that in the past and uh, it just felt weird for me because I felt I couldn't give my all in the interactions with my with with my students and I actually chose to say you know maybe this is not a good fit and let's find a different solution so yeah you know not everybody not everybody will need or want what you have and that's great but the people who do see the value, you, you tend to see like a huge, um, like a very, very interesting evolution. Not just in terms of uh, their self-confidence, but you see it in their lives. Yeah, yeah. Some, some people became, uh, you know, since they started training with us, they became their team leaders. They got promoted at their jobs. People are making more money. Uh, people who are not in relationships, um, you know, actually, they're, they're happily married now. Uh, people who are in miserable relationships uh, have claimed that of, of, uh, of their lives. So these are some of the, the results that people are getting through the program. 
So would you? So you were you were mentioning that you don't work with people that aren't on that on that mindset that you know don't mm-hmm. want to go down that route, which is obviously a good thing. It saves you a lot of time down the line. How do you go about That's- filtering people out before they get started? So people usually uh, fill in a form, and it's a pretty long form. It, it's like a um, 12-question form, and they're very personal, very deep questions, like uh, what do you need um, and why do you need that, what's holding you back, what would your life look like if you keep doing the same things that you're doing, and um, that's, that's a filtering process in and of itself. And people go through this form, and then we call them up for a phone interview. If um, if we feel that they're a good fit and we do and we can help them out, we schedule them for a trial period for a week where they can see you know the the whole training sessions. We can get to meet them, and then at the end of the trial period, we decide if we want to take um, that person on and work together. So I'm going to put you on the spot, mm-hmm. <laughs> which means I might have to edit Please this do. part of the podcast. If you're still listening, then Bogdan said yes. <laughs> okay, so so can are we able to take your questions and actually include it with this with this podcast as part of a download with the transcription? You would. Well, I would have to translate them in um, in English. It's not it's not a secret or anything, right? You can find this process anywhere, and you can use this process for selling very high ticket. Um, you know, procedures as well or programs as well. It's it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. It can, you can include it as a PDF. Awesome. And if you are listening to this and you are not focused on personal development, the the reason I'd, I'd want you to have something like this is because if you, whether it's personal development or not, if you are tapping into a person's real because let's 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 take the martial arts out of it. We we always talk about this. Martial arts is the mm-hmm. vehicle to get them where they want. Um, yes, you're not selling martial arts training. You're selling the result that martial arts delivers. So yes, if if your questions are provoking that thought of understanding what people really want, um, even as a even if personal development is not your focus at all, but understanding what the real motives are of what this person wants to achieve could be something that you could use in your own school and really benefit from the way um, the way you go about customizing your presentation or your in- introduction. Because if you talk about a person's needs, then they're going to be more likely to respond than the logistics of we have a class Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 20 push-ups. Yeah. Most, most people, <laughs> most people go about this, uh, you know, the wrong way in the sense that they start talking about themselves, like, oh, well, but you know, uh, our school is the only one that teaches uh, breaking bricks, and my my teacher was uh, the world champion in uh, China. Nobody cares. It's like if you just if you start focusing on your your potential clients or just the people who are interested in what you're doing and you're talking about what they need and really being honest whether you can help them or not in that sense and if you cannot help them to recommend something else or someone else like for example people would I remember someone uh, filling in the form and saying look I need help with my money with my financials because um, I can't find a job and I got a phone I got on the phone with uh, with that person I recommended somebody who teaches personal finance I recommended you know finding a mentor or because I can I can help them it wasn't the right time so and and this is also important if somebody can't really afford your program don't give it to them right give them the tools that they need to um, to to, to, ha- to be better off but don't don't push don't push the sell if it's not the right time for sure, but there's, I guess there's a flip side to that as well, right? Because um, sometimes, and, and obviously this, 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 what I'm about to say is, is the context of where this happens. I mean, if mm-hmm. you've gone out of your way and you've presented something to them and they can't afford it, 
by all means. Um, at at that level, yeah, don't push the side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. but I think it's important to not confuse that with the smokescreen of I can't. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because because it's very surprising what people can afford when mm-hmm. you tell them that this is going to deliver the result that they want. Um, yes. People make changes. People cancel stuff. They'll cancel their, you know, this, their satellite networks or whatever they need. And if something is going to give them a result and the confidence and change everything about them, they they'll will, find they will a it. way. They'll find a way. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Um, I, I feel that people tend to say that. I can't afford it when when you're talking too much about your uh, school and about Wing Chun, right, and you're like, you, you're being pushy again, but if if they fill in the form and they're looking for you and you're going through and you're taking them through this filtering process, just like you would for a job interview, um, they're, they're already qualified, right? So they kind of expect to invest in themselves in that way. Good, good point. And um, I, it, it takes me back just to, to old olden days sales training. It's um, it's I can under, I can I, mean, I can I can see there how hard it might be for a martial arts school owner if if you you know you started a martial arts school and, and you haven't been in a in that type of training of, of sales training. When when people say when people tell you they can't afford stuff, it's easy to just mm-hmm. accept that as true. But you know what we were always taught in sales is that's more than likely just a smokescreen. Um, yeah. I mean, if they're engaging, if they are actually in your school and talking about martial arts and they tell you they can't afford it, then what were they doing there in the first place? I mean, they knew it was going to cost them money, right? But they knew it was not going to be free. So um, it's it's always and this I think it's the hardest part in communication is is really. I guess looking in the mirror and, you know, if somebody, and I know we're going off topic here, but it, it just, it, mm-hmm. I think it adds context to what we're talking about is if you're having mm-hmm. that conversation mm-hmm. and, and, and that's something that everybody tells you, then maybe it's, maybe unfortunately you've got to go look in the mirror and it's the hardest thing to mm. do. But you've got to look at what is it that you are saying that is causing that because you're missing a point. You're maybe like Bogdan is saying, you're talking too much about yourself and you're not focused on what their actual needs are. Yes, yes, I absolutely agree. And I think we're very conflicted as martial arts uh, teachers in this uh, aspect of, of charging what we're worth. And what most, most people teaching martial arts uh, don't realize is that the same person that says, I can't afford you, pays a psychotherapist more than they will ever pay you for, for therapy, right? But you need to realize that you're not just teaching martial arts, you're teaching, you're giving people a chance to live healthier and happier lives, right? So why, why, should, somebody, why should somebody who is, prevent, who is uh, helping them cure the problem be paid more than you who are helping them prevent the, pro- the problem, right? So I'm not saying, okay, uh, raise your prices to, so that nobody will come to your school anymore but just be aware of the value that you're really giving you're not teaching people to to punch other people in the face like more than less than one percent of the people that you love or teach will get into an actual fight you're teaching people to, to know themselves by knowing themselves they learn to say yes to more of what makes them happy and say no to what doesn't make them happy and doesn't bring more of that that satisfaction in their lives so you're canceling their their medical bills you're canceling their psychotherapy bills and um you know just you're just helping them thrive definitely so hey bogdan that's that's been a, this has been a very insightful conversation. Um, I want to I want to ask you where where should if if you're new to this personal development thing. I mean, I've I probably mm-hmm. have a few you know preferences of myself, but for for you as a as a martial arts instructor and you run a school and you do this. If I wanted to get into personal development, where what do you think is the best place to start? 
Well, the internet, <laughs> the internet, it's full of personal development quotes and uh, Facebook videos. <laughs> Facebook, no. yeah, as well. Sorry. The problem, the problem at the same time with the uh, the internet is like the, the advantage of the internet is the the huge quantity of information. The disadvantage is the huge quantity of information. So what I would recommend if you're teaching martial arts and you want to tap into personal development is actually to start listening to the personal development through martial arts podcast. There we go. I, there's there's a plug for you. <laughs> but, well, spot on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and absolutely go ahead and check uh, the interview with George we, we talked a lot about marketing and growing your school that was a lot of fun yeah yeah I, I basically recommend the podcast because uh, we're having very very powerful insp- inspirational people you know powerful inspiration from from people who are experts in this field of fitness, of personal development, of um, you know communication, um, I'm interviewing Florin today, who is a finance expert, a personal finance expert who teaches that, and also, of course, uh, martial arts masters that you can learn from and get insights from. Yeah. Fantastic. And so, your podcast, just for direct access again, that's addicted to Wing Chun. No, I think the, the best would, would be just to Google personal development through martial arts podcast and find it. You can find it on, on iTunes for now. Google Play is not available in Romania yet, but I'm still looking into that and um, putting it on, um, making it available on Google Play as well. But yeah, the, the fastest way would be just to Google it, the title. Sounds good. Bogdan, it's been great speaking to you. And I've, I'm going to round this up with one last question. One last question. Sure. And that is, what is, the, what is the one biggest reason that I would want to come and visit Romania? Um, well, to come to our school, that would be the number one. <laughs> <laughs> Romania is awesome. You know, we're we're very welcoming people. I think that um, if you come to Romania, you would immediately feel like you're home. You know, the people, the people, one hundred percent. And you know, you can check out the mountains as well, the sea. There's a lot of stuff to to do and a lot of fun. But one hundred percent, the people. And your school, of course. And my school, though. <laughs> that's that's a given. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, Gun, thanks. Thanks again. Uh, great chatting to you, and it was great being on featured on, on your personal development podcast as well, personal development for martial arts. And uh, look forward to thanks. catching up again soon. Hi, uh, awesome. Thank you so much for your invitation, guys. Thanks so much for listening in. Bye. Awesome. Cheers.